Yeah. We've been yeah. waiting a long time. Well, no, no, I, I'm, I'm in my car There's right now. There's a lot of Bitcoin. We're talking no, no, I, I just went to the bank. I, I got, I got the money. I'm going to be there. I, it's probably, I'm probably about five minutes away. You cannot keep doing this. I'm going to have to send my friend around. It's not good enough. Yeah, um, look, uh, there's a... I think I got to pull over. There's a. Um, I better put the phone down. There's a. There's a. Uh, there's a thing up ahead. But um, I, I will see you literally within well, five minutes. You, you, I hope okay, so. Thanks. I hope so. Yeah. That's, what, that's what you've been telling me for days. But I. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, Hi, it's Greg Harrell here to talk about Vim, and uh, the topic of tonight's screencast is fold styling. Uh, this is now going to be the third time that I record this. Uh, the first time was a couple of days ago when somehow the, the video file didn't get saved to disk. The second time was just now when somehow I managed to record my camera but not my screen. And the third time lucky, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to cover it. So I'm going to show you how to style the way the folds are shown in, in Vim. Um, I'm going to start by showing you how they look by default or at least how they used to look for me. So let's look back through my uh, git repo history. Uh, there's going to be some hint of it in here. There we go, that'll do. Uh, so I'm going to check out the rev that was immediately before when I made these changes. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. So let's open Vim. Um, let's open a file that has, that is not the file that has anything useful in it. Um, let's go to this one. Right, so you can see here there's a fold. Um, this is not actually quite like how folds look in Vim by default, and the reason is that my fill chars setting isn't complete. So let's put it where it normally would be. So what you can see there, this fold here, is how folds would normally look in Vim. We've got a plus, some dashes, uh, a summary of the number of lines that are concealed by the fold, and then a hint as to what's inside the fold. Um, in this case, the first line uh, is used as the hint, and then we have dashes going all the way to the right. Uh, so now I'm going to show you what my <laughs> folds look like after I've styled them. So I'll go back to the current head and I will uh, pop the good old stash. And let's open another Vim instance. And this file is now in a different place. So I open the same file here and fold roughly the same thing. So you can see what the difference is. So Unicode is the new hotness. So instead of all that ASCII stuff, we've got a double right angle quote, we've got mid dots instead of hyphens, and we've got a cursive L for lines. Um, so this is partly about aesthetics, but it's also partly about utility. Um, I like compactness, so getting rid of the space between the number and the word lines, and also just putting a symbol in place of the full word is a win. Um, and I also find the, the visual separation is better uh, when you have mid dots, because uh, they look more distinct, these folds. Um, as opposed to things like you know the cursor line, which is just kind of a rectangle, and the the line that separates splits. There's a certain roundness to the mid dots that makes them stand out a little bit. Um, so that's the practical utility of changing the way your folds are styled. It's definitely not a game changer, but if you enjoy tweaking your Vim setup, as I obviously do, and you've run out of things to tweak, this could be something for you. So I'm going to close this old Vim instance. And I'm going to show you how the configuration actually takes place. So let's look at my settings. Um, so here are the fold relating settings, fold related settings. As always, I want some feature detection in here so that I can run this dot file against pretty much any version of Vim. So that's what this if has folding check does. Um, if we have folding, we are going to set that fold marker, um, override the default hyphens and the default hyphens and make it mid dot. Um, and the reason why when I originally did the demo, there was nothing to the right of the fold was because I, my config originally looked like this, um, where I'd blown away field chars instead of just overriding an entry in it. Um, and so when I realized that I'd made that mistake, I went back and added the mid dot back into field chars. So you can find out what other kind of things field chars can do by looking at the help for field chars. Um, there's a list there. The other obvious thing that I'm doing is, uh, if you look up here, you can see I'm overriding the character that's used to draw the vertical bar when you make a vertical split. Um, normally it would just use an ASCII split, but as I said, uh, Unicode is the new hotness. Um, and so Unicode here allows us to get an uninterrupted vertical line, which makes for a cleaner and more obvious visual separation. So that's fill charts. Um, fold text is the other important one. 
So that also has help, and I think the help probably has a sample somewhere um, in the help, which you could look up if you wanted to. Um, but I'm going to show you my implementation of fault text. Uh, so that would be under settings, or this one here. Uh, so as the comment suggests here, um, we're going to take the default fold text function, which returns something like that, and we're going to make it return something like this. Uh, so basically, what are we going to do? We're going to grab the right double angle quote. Um, and the reason why I've assigned this to a variable is so that I can look at this file even on a machine without the right fonts. Uh, and even if this double right angle quote ends up getting garbled, I still know what it is from the variable name. And same with the other Unicode things that we have in here. Um, so let's jump back to where we were, sorry. Uh, we're going to put the right double angle quote, a couple of mid dots, um, this lines summary, which I'll explain in a sec, dashes, which I'll explain in a sec, and then the first line from the fold. So let's look at the items here. The line summary, that is produced by using a bit of string concatenation and doing some arithmetic on these special fold end and uh, fold start variables here. These are magical variables that then will set before invoking this function. And we use fold start again to get the first line from the fold. Basically, get line fold start just says grab the line from the buffer that is the first line that's hidden in the fold. And then finally, uh, we're going to take this other magical variable, fold dashes, and replace all the hyphens with mid dots. So fold dashes is basically these two hyphens here. Vim sets this magical variable to return you a dash string of the appropriate size. Uh, I think the, the size is related to the fold level. I mean, so basically what this does is give us some variable number of mid dots um, that matches the length of the string that Vim gives us. Stick it all together and that's how we make our folds. Uh, so that's really all there is to it as far as fold customization goes. Uh, so I'm going to leave it there. Um, but if you found this useful and are interested in this kind of content, subscribe because I've got some more stuff that I'm going to be recording after this um, and I'll be publishing to the channel soon. Um, so if we go over to this other buffer on the left here you'll see what it looks like now that is also not what I, <laughs> I was thinking that I might have had an old copy of that but let's uh, not what I intended not what I intended do, 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 do. Um, so that's what it looks like now you'll see that they consist of a whoops a plus sign um, some dashes here whoops um, when I move the cursor, it's... So I've got to use the mouse for this, obviously. <laughs>